at uh, blockchains and uh, layer twos. Uh, great to see you here. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so can you tell us about your journey into crypto? How did you get into industry? Yeah, absolutely. So before crypto, I was this uh, electrical engineer at Tesla. So that was my first job. And then through Tesla, I started to get more exposure to like stocks and stock trading and fintech. So eventually I left Tesla to start my own company, which was in the fintech space. It was uh, to do with stock trading and stuff like that. Then long story short, that ended. I was looking for my next opportunity. This was around 2017. So when, when Ethereum was just starting to become popular and then things like the DAO hack had just happened. Um, so then uh, I just started like jumping in, exploring the platform, looking at it from a developer point of view. So then I started doing hackathons, started networking a little bit. Uh, then I started going to meetups in San Francisco where I was based at, a time, at the time. And then I ended up meeting my co-founder, Arjun, and then we started Connects together. And that's quite interesting shift uh, from uh, being in the car industry and electrical engineer yeah. into crypto. Exactly. And small development stuff. So what did you excite uh, about the industry? Yeah, I mean, I guess Elon has followed the same path, right? From Tesla into Bitcoin and Dogecoin and stuff. So it's kind of uh, interesting. He's more <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, the interesting part for me, I mean, like I said, I was very interested in like the software engineering, the development aspect and how Ethereum was like such a open API that basically like anything you build on top of Ethereum automatically becomes like open source. It becomes an API. It becomes a building block for any other software that's built on top of it to be make use of it. So that, that aspect was very interesting to me. Then also, once I got into that part, then I started to like see the sort of financial opportunities, how you could kind of like uh, decentralize finance and you can kind of like build these permissionless building blocks that mm -hmm. kind of allow a new set of participants that were current, like previously excluded from the system to be able to get into the system, as well as kind of like reduce the amount of like rent seeking middlemen in crypto or in finance in general by putting them on these permissionless crypto based platforms. Actually, you started just as uh, layer two first, and then you shifted to making bridges, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did we did layer two, but not really like roll up layer two. So we did state channels first. That was our initial implementation, which was like a pre layer two layer two. So before there were actually roll ups, there were uh, state channels. So that was like the best way to scale. So. Uh, you know, through that process, then we discovered that like the next thing after that was going to be like interoperability because we saw all these different roll up platforms coming up and becoming like a thing and all competing with each other. So we said instead of competing with the roll ups, why don't we build like bridges between the roll ups and make them work with each other? So that's how we got into interoperability. So which year was it when you got into interoperability? Uh, that was 2020 ish, like end of 2020. Early 2021 is when we launched our like first bridge platform. We were one of the first ones to launch like a cross chain bridge between like Ethereum, Binance, and uh, Polygon. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And on your website, it's written Internet of Ethereum. Why Ethereum if you uh, bridge uh, now different blockchains? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. But because we're focused, I mean, we as a company, we've always been like Ethereum first. We've always been very pro Ethereum. We, and we built everything on the EVM. So right now we're like uh, really focused on EVM. We're focused on EVM blockchains. We're focused on roll-ups specifically as well. Mm -hmm. But we do want to just build interconnections between like everything. Nice. And as well, like, uh, do you plan to support more chains? For example, uh, you currently don't support Solana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good question. But I think, you know, we probably will not support Solana in its current form, but there is an EVM layer called Neon that is coming up on Solana. Mm -hmm. So that will probably be our first building block towards Solana. We do have plans eventually to go to like alternate layer ones and stuff like that. But I think in the meantime, we will uh, continue with what we're doing in terms of the EVM support. Mm -hmm. And now like a lot of uh, chains and layer two solutions uh, release their ZK EVM rollups. So what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, I think it's great. I think ZK EVM is kind of like the end game for like scaling. It's like the most, the best way to scale. Uh, you know, it has the best properties. There's no like uh, seven day exit window. You can exit immediately. Uh, you know, it has the highest like scalability parameters. So we're really excited to support ZK EVMs in our bridge. And we're already working with a few of the companies that behind these things to get like day one support on their ZK EVM through our bridge. 
can you mention some names or is it still? I mean, I think all the main names, you know, like uh, Polygon, uh, ZK Sync, Starkware, uh, we're, we're basically talking to all of those. I don't think we've reached out to Scroll just yet, but mm -hmm. we, are, we should eventually do that. Yeah, they're all at this conference. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And as well, uh, you plan to release your token too, like the next token? Uh, yes, yes. So we did announce the next token. The plan was originally to release it this year in June. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the way the, the market kind of went, it didn't, didn't provide the right conditions for us to release our token at that time. So what we decided is we're going to hold off on it for a few months, kind of see how things go. Uh, b focus on like shipping and building out our platform, our new version of our, our bridge, and then we will eventually get back to the token launch. So what will be the purpose of your token? Uh, the purpose of the token is obviously around governance, decentralizing the parts of the protocol, and incentivizing liquidity providers in our system, uh, as well as like uh, those who run like nodes, or which are our routers, which are liquidity providers as well, like active liquidity providers. There'll be a staking slashing mechanism as well as decentralizing the like sequencer components. So the centralized components of our system right now will be decentralized through our token. And has your airdrop been already distributed or not yet? No, not yet. We just started, we announced the like criteria and took the snapshots and everything, but we have not actually uh, dropped the token yet. <laughs> uh, are there any, any other ways uh, to get airdrop of uh, your token currently? Yeah, so we have a contributors program. So we have a like uh, we have a full like builders track contributors program for anybody who wants to get involved. You know, there's many things to do in terms of like uh, creating documentation, like uh, doing design work, uh, building apps on top of Connext. Uh, you know, running routers, liquidity providers, so like all these different things we have incentivized ways to get tokens through Connects. Yeah, so uh, USB uh, allowed to build uh, other dApps uh, on top of Connext, uh, so will you have your ecosystem fund as well in future? Yes, about those projects? absolutely. So that is a big part of the token as well, is to have like a grants program where we can incentivize people to build on top of Connects. Like the way we think of Connects, right now it's just a bridge, but we think of it as going to be a, like a full developer platform mm -hmm. for projects to build cross-chain native applications and use cases on top of Connects. And uh, what dApps do you have in your ecosystem currently? Uh, currently, we have things like Lee Finance, other bridge aggregators. Uh, the use cases are fairly simple right now, but with our new platform that we're launching, that is where it's really going to take it to the next level because we're going to support full data passing. We're working with partners such as uh, Superfluid, uh, DeFi Wonderland. Uh, those are just the couple that we've announced. We have a m many others like in the works that we're working with behind the scenes that you know we will announce in the coming days, weeks. Cool. And uh, can you share as well any other upcoming plans for Next? Yeah. So uh, like I said, we're going through our major bridge upgrade right now. So it's going to be like the next version of our Connects bridge. Right now, our bridge is mainly around like liquidity and sending liquidity. But the next version of the bridge is going to be all around like data passing and cross-chain calls, cross-chain communication. So really to unlock the use cases, you know, some of the use cases like governance, DAO, DAO-based bridging, protocol integrations, etc. Some of the like DeFi building block tools that we're really excited about. What is the current business model for Connects? Uh, so Connects is structured as like a protocol, so public goods company. So we don't want to like directly monetize the network itself. We don't take any type of protocol fee. All the fees that are generated by the bridge go directly to the liquidity providers. Mm -hmm. So you know, we, we as a company are not trying to make money off that. We will you know, launch our token for our sustainable plan and then have uh, you know, things like that. So nothing directly monetizing the network through Connects mm -hmm. itself. And how do you see uh, the current state of the market? And when we will s like we see that uh, it's been pumped in anticipation of the merge. Uh, so how do you see the market? <laughs> yeah, so we're very bullish on the merge as well. You know, we're like I said, we're Ethereum first. We're always Ethereum focused. We've been part of the Ethereum community since the early days, you know, 2016, 2017. So the merge is very exciting for us and we're excited to see how the scaling roadmap comes out with the merge plus all the roll-ups plus dank sharding. I think it's going to very much be like a multi-chain ecosystem uh, as in like there's going to be all these different roll-ups. 
But also in addition to Ethereum, you know, I think like other chains are doing very cool stuff. Like Cosmos is, is innovating a lot. Polkadot is also starting to innovate a lot. There's some other L1s that are coming up, like these move based L1s. So it's very clear that there's going to be multiple chains forever. And that's why, you know, Connect's place in the market becomes even more important as we move forward because of all these different ecosystems, different chains, different uh, execution environments that need to have interoperability solutions. Uh, yeah, so we bridge to Evmos currently, mm -hmm. so that's kind of like our starting point. Our plan has always been to like include maybe IBC connectors through Evmos to be able to interact with the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem. Okay, well, we'll see some more stuff uh, with them, and uh, as well, uh, uh, so what will be the catalyst for the next bull market? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the merge is definitely going to be a big one. And I think, you know, through the merge, we will see that there is going to be like a new level of uh, Ethereum like tokenomics itself. So, you know, once once the minor selling pressure is, is removed, that will be like a huge shift in the market as well as kind of like the burn economics. So Ethereum will start to get burned. It might become deflationary at some point. So that will kind of be like a huge catalyst on like, you know, unlocking like a different way of like pricing Ethereum and like the whole economics behind it. So I think we have yet to see how that plays out in the market. Hopefully that's the catalyst, but you know, the whole global macro situation is kind of crazy. So we don't know how that's going to be hanging over everyone's head. Um, but I think that will kind of start the catalyst and then we will see this roll up situation. ZK roll ups are also coming. So we might see like a huge scalability increase around this time as well. And then so, you know, what, from what I see, the fundamentals have never been better. So we just need kind of like things to settle down at the macro and regulation level. And then finally, we'll see like, you know, the rocket ship. And getting back to bridges, we have so many hacks uh, like uh, Harmony bridge hacks, now Solana bridge hacks. Uh, like how, what uh, security measures do you take for Connects? Yeah, so Connects has always been very focused on security first. So we've never built like a bridge based on a multi-sig because we think that's very insecure technology. Um, so, you know, we're thinking of that first and foremost. So we're always thinking about security. We're always getting our code audited. We're always like, you know, thinking about ways that our systems can break and how we can mitigate the risks of that immediately. So with our new system, we're going to release like comprehensive security frameworks on like how our bridge is going to be the most secure bridge possible and, uh, you know, how we can deal with risks as they come. But I do think, you know, bridges are basically becoming the weak points of the ecosystem. So it's very important to be like very careful about security. And as well, how do you compete with uh, other cross-chain bridge uh, solutions? Yeah, so mainly it's around the security model. So like uh, the, there's a couple different ways to do bridging. You know, there's multi-sig based, validators based. There's kind of like a, you know, a trusted Oracle based setups like, a, you know, layer zero and things like that. So we think we differentiate based on our security model alone. So right now we use atomic swap based model. We're transitioning into like an optimistic bridging based model, which we still think is like the best uh, security model for bridges moving forward. Okay, so maybe some projects should take your experience in the implementation. So thank you for interesting conversation. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you so much. And hope to see your token probably next year. Yes, <laughs> yes. Bull market. Yes, thank, thank you. you.